Hi everybody and welcome to the winter edition of Strategic Management MBA 512. So this is a winter course which we're going to complete in three weeks which is um, a very short period to do a full course. That's why I'm setting up the blackboard and all the instructions early in case you want to get an early start. Feel free. Now how does this class work? It's a decent question. I set up a video which you're watching right now uh, called Getting Started with the MBA 512. So this video is going to give you the lowdown of exactly how this course works and what's expected of you. Now the first thing I say you should do when you when you first start the course is click on Getting Started Course Schedule. So in this quick little tab here I say you know go to course documents to find syllabus, class notes, and mp3 lectures. Watch the video syllabus uh, see assignments in the menu tab for the assignments and homework. See discussions tab and reply to class discussions. Register for the Zoom simulation. Uh, and I suggest subscribing to the class playlist on YouTube. So this is the getting started button. So generally on any normal day I'd say you want to get started by reading the announcements. So the first announcement I posted was the getting started announcement. But I also have the, I want to give you a heads up, there's one exam for the class, and it's a final exam. And this exam is going to cover the entire course, and it's going to start, it opens up on um, the, during the last week of class. So just be prepared to know the dates of when this exam is opening and closing. I generally give you uh, a couple days to uh, work on this. Now, another big project that I highlight in announcements that I want to make sure you realize is that we're going to be competing in uh, a business strategic management simulation called the Zoom simulation. So the Zoom simulation, the first round, is typically due very early in the first week. So you want to make sure that you've looked over the due dates here and made sure that you know when each round is due for completion. The um, a one, one note in this video of getting started with strategic management the due dates in the video or certain information in the video such as uh, class code or these due dates may be different depending on what section of the course you're taking I usually teach multiple sections of this and you may be in a section that has different due dates or different class codes so if that's the case always refer directly to Blackboard itself where you'll find the same announcements but the, the due dates or the the class codes might be slightly different depending on what section you're in so don't rely on this video for any due dates or any specific information of your section. That's all going to be detailed on Blackboard directly. Okay, so now that that's been said. So, so you want to go to um, jupyterinteractive.net and register for the simulation. So let me actually show you how that works. Let me just copy this. And, our, and the class code is usually listed right below. Okay, so when you get into, when you paste the, the jupyterinteractive.net, go into student sign up, and here you're going to complete the uh, registration and continue. It will ask you to pay for, with a credit card. There are no, our course does not contain an activation code. The activation code only comes from, if you buy the, a certain strategic, man, strategic management textbook, I think it's a two or three hundred dollar textbook. It comes with activation codes to the simulation. Since my textbooks are much cheaper, we have to buy the simulation a la carte. So you're going to pay for that with credit card and register uh, for the simulation. And once you're registered, the first time you sign in, you're going to, um, you know, the first time you log in, it's going to ask you for a class code. So that's when you go over to Blackboard, look in assignments or announcements, and the class code will be your class code for our class would be would be shown there and you want to enter in the class code and then click submit class code. So once you type in and submit the class code, it's going to connect you to my course. And there are two buttons here once you first log in. One is play individual practice. This is where you can play practice against the computer to get familiar with the simulation, test out ideas, run scenarios, and generally make your mistakes here as much as you want. The play cl classroom competition is the side that um, you're going to be using for our for our course and this is where we're going to be competing as teams of one I I will allow you to work as a team of one because this is an online class in such a short period it's difficult to work with teammates however if you have a friend or somebody you know is also in this class and you're going to work with them in the same team I'm fine with that 
as well. So click on Classroom Competition, and then you're going to have to create a new company. So you click on Create New Company, type in any name you want, any name you want as your company name, and then you put yourself as the president and put your email in here. And then you, you um, make a little mission statement for your company, save the data. And then you'll be ready to start the competition using sales, marketing, production, finance. You fill in these three tabs. Now, there's a specific video I have that you can use. Uh, and it's right here. It's extra help video with Zoom. I created this video about a year ago to detail how to be successful in the simulation. So I created a YouTube video here that you can um, work with that will that gives you a gives you a step by step by me me giving you a step by step instructions on how to to complete the simulation and do well in it because we're going to be running two rounds each week so we have three weeks two rounds per week so we're going to com be completing six rounds of the simulation your grade is going to be based on points so if you get over 2,500 points. I typically have more than 80% of the students making over 2,500 points. So it's not difficult as long as you put the effort and time in, you'll get the full 15 points for this project. And it's a, it's a fun project. Um, and we compete head to head against each other. And I, I do a review of the results every week. And I talk about the strategy and the simulation within the lectures of the course. So it's very intertwined with what we're doing in this class. Now, I put a second, another follow-up announcements about the Zoom's reflective observations. So in the Zoom simulation at the bottom, they have these reflective observations. These are very time-consuming. They're, they're good. I like them, but we don't have enough time in the winter course to complete these. So I'm making these optional, not required to fill out and complete these reflective observations where you see them in the simulation. Okay, the next uh, posting I have under announcements is how I'm going to grade the case studies. So this class also includes case studies. So the, the case studies are um, based on current strategic management, uh, real world problems and issues that you're going to read over, and then you're going to put a case together. You're going to um, read the information I provide you. You're going to do some research, find some additional articles or some additional information. You're going to cite that information properly, and I put in this announcements where you can use to do proper citations, where you can get information about how to properly cite a paper. And then I lay out the criteria of what I use in the rubric of how I grade the case studies. So in, the grace, in the case, each case study, I'm looking for you to be, the paper to be well organized, presented. I'm looking for the research to be outstanding, that you were thorough and the issues were addressed uh, concisely and completely using some outside either um, newspaper, magazine, or book information or research papers. The information that you use is cited properly when you cite a fact in a paper, a sales amount, a number of locations, any fact that you pull from an article, you want to, you want to cite that article properly within the case study. Your, um, the writing was interesting, engaging, professional, grammatically correct, um, good sentence comp composition, also all topics, uh, requested in the assignment, all questions are covered thoroughly, and you made good use of space. You didn't fill it with all the fluff or fillers that um, you made efficient use of how you answered the, the questions and um, they were thorough, but yet efficiently written. Okay, so those are the announcements so far on the announcement page. And I, when I do post announcements, I usually send an email to your stonybrook.edu account as well, notifying that you, you know, what the announcement is and that you have an announcement. So it's an important area of keeping organized for the class. Now the course documents, if we come over here, I put one of the top things I put up here is a, a student example of a case study. So we're just talking about how the case studies are graded. So I have a student example of a case study that um, you know shows you how I like it to be written out. I like you to put um, you know your name up top, the case study you're working on, and then the title of the case study. Question one, please, you know. It helps me a great deal if you label each section by question number so I know what you're answering. Then a generous amount of reply to each question. And then you see question two comes up here. And this is, you know, you can put graphics in the paper. That's wonderful. And as you're going through, you know, these are answering the different questions pretty thoroughly. And then the 
the papers are properly cited in the reference list at the end of the paper. So if you have a reference list that's properly cited, you went through the questions pretty thoroughly uh, and answered them succinctly and you wrote a good paper, then you're going to get an excellent grade on the case study. So I want to give you an example of what an A paper looks like for a case study. Okay, so also in here we have the syllabus. I have the notes. Under notes, these are my PowerPoint lectures for the Kellogg's on Strategy and the Blue Ocean textbook. I also have, I backed up the class MP3 files of all my video lectures, but generally it'll be easier to access them through YouTube. And I also have um, MP3s of the Blue Ocean textbook. So these are MP3s on the first six chapters of the Blue Ocean textbook. If you want to, if you if you know, if you're a little handy with electronics, you might be able to download these, put you, put them on your iPod or MP3 player, or play them in your car. If you want to kind of listen to this material on your way to work, or or if you're um, anytime you have some downtime, it may be easier for you to listen to this particular uh, book. And luckily enough, I have these sample files that you can listen to. So that's pretty much what's in the course document. So let's go over the syllabus real quickly. So in the syllabus, this is an asynchronous class, which means I'm going to post everything you need and you uh, get to the information, consume it, and complete your assignments before the due date. So this, this class is really, we're looking at um, strategic management. So we're going to be talking about all sorts of different um, concepts and strategy. And we're going to talk about groups of people and what their interest in business is and, and what business does and how how the success of business is measured. Identify you know, the key strengths of existing businesses and developing and maintaining their competitive advantage within in their industry. We're going to identify and analyze factors uh, that are critical to success in business, including business strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Um, and we're going to apply analytical tools and frameworks to strategy as well. So we're going to accomplish these learning goals through the textbooks, through the assignments and case studies, and through the simulation. So the first textbook is going to be Kellogg's on Strategy. And this is a textbook that's a classic <clears throat> strategy textbook that's very abbreviated, but has all the main points in it. And the best thing is that this textbook is generally around $20. The second textbook is the Blue Ocean Strategy, which is a more modern approach to strategy and a more current approach to strategy in a globalized, innovative economy. This book's also generally around $20. You can easily get both books online or through the Amazon Stony Brook bookstore. Okay, so the assignments will be posted on Blackboard. I'll show you the assignments in a minute. And your grades will be as follows. Participating on the discussion boards will be 18 points of the class. The mini case study work will be 42 points. The online exam at the end of the course will be 25 points. And the Zoom simulation will be 15 points. Together, all that added together is 100 points for the class. This is how the points translates into a grade. Um, so the test will posted will be post uh, posted. I'll give you multiple days to complete. Participation is what I'm looking for you to do in the discussion boards, uh, and then I break out the schedule by week one. So week one, I give you a basic idea of what you'd be doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then week two. And yeah, these winter courses run Tuesday for Friday. It's the official days. So I give you sort of a breakdown of what to do on each of the days for all three weeks, and the assignments and the chapters you should be working on. Uh, and the videos you should be watching to so give you a good idea of what to do here. Okay, so let's just move this back up. Okay, so that's the syllabus. You should read over that more thoroughly when you have a chance. And now let's get into the assignments. So the assignments tab here, this is where the first assignment I list is the discussion boards. So we're going to get back to that specifically in a minute, but the discussion boards are here. This is where you participate. Don't submit anything to the assignments group for the discussion board. Everything's going to be submitted in the discussion area here. The discussion boards are 18 points. I set up six discussion boards. There's going to be um, two discussion boards per week. Each of them are worth three points, and I'm expecting every student to post to these discussion boards, but we'll get more into that in a minute. I want to talk more about the case studies. So I have five case studies for this class. The week one, we have two case studies due. In week two, we have another two case studies due. And week three, we have the fifth and final case study. Now, this is how you complete the case study. 
you download the file, you see attached files, Walmart versus Amazon, you download this PDF, and in the beginning of the PDF, I will list the questions that I want you to go, want you to answer. And I also will provide an introductory uh, document of some research uh, information material to help you answer these questions. Okay, so that would be the document you want to read over. Then you should go, and before you answer these questions, you should think about doing a little additional research. Going on, you know, we have a link, a direct link to library resources here, and you can go to library resources and you can type in a subject, say a keyword, and you can look for, um, you can search for articles on a particular subject or particular person, and you can get a bunch of information here right from the library articles, news magazines, research papers, all sorts of additional research you can do to add to your paper. So when you're thinking about your um, let's see, when you're thinking about your questions here, I want you to bring this to life. So don't just regurgitate information directly in this paper I provided, but also do some outside information and some research to really bring your, your questions to life and give it a little bit more body and fullness to your answers. So once you write your paper up and you, and you want to click on this case one or case two, in this case we're looking at the Walmart versus Amazon, you just click on the link here and it'll provide you with um, an area where you can browse your computer. And this is where you're going to attach your file. So you just click on um, anything you want here uh, on, on your paper, of course. And the paper should be saved as a Word document or a PDF. And then you could just click Submit. And then I will receive your assignment on my side. I will receive your paper. So make sure. Now, I have them both due uh, at the end of the week. So you don't want to start these in the same day. So judge what, your, what work you need to do for the week. And then make sure you have your assignments due and posted. Don't wait till the last minute on this. So again, week one, we have two case studies. We have um, and in week two, we have another two case studies, case study three and four. And in week three we have our last case study and then again we have the zoom simulation so this I went over under announcements and like I showed you earlier you you go to jupiteractive.net you register as a student you enter in the class code for the course and uh, don't make sure you double check what the class code is it may be different than the one displayed in this video depending on the section of the course you're in and then you will check out the due dates for each of the rounds and the first round is usually due pretty soon uh, and I'm, there's going to be two rounds due each week. So this is something, a project that you're going to be involved in on multiple days over the winter session. Okay, so let's go and finally discuss, these, discuss the discussion board assignment. So in the discussions, there are, um, the first area is class questions. So this is if you have any specific questions about the class, you come in here and you can create a thread. And generally when you create a thread, it's nice to put your name on it. And you can say, um, where are the case? Where are the case studies? That could be your question. So then um, I would come in here and I would say, uh, I would click on this and I would say, oh, okay, let me reply. And I would say, look under, look under assignments. And I would submit. Uh, answer to your question. So this is an area where if you have a question you think others could benefit from, you can submit in this area here. So let me go back. And then generally you should be able to, let me just edit something here. Okay. So I'm just changing a, uh, changing a thing here. So when you click on it, you should see a button here that says subscribe. So if you click on this, any emails that are posted in the question section, you'll get <clears throat> a direct email alerting to you the fact that something's been posted here. Okay. I like to turn that on because if a student has a question there, I like to answer as soon as I can. Okay. So what we have here for, uh, for week one, you can see the due dates inside of the of 
the discussion question. The discussion question one, it starts on January 2nd and goes to January 6th um, for this particular uh, section here. So discussion question one, those double check those due dates because again, that um, these are specific to this particular section. Your section may have slightly different due dates depending on when your section is. So we have discussion question one, discussion question two are, are due within the first week. So each week I do two discussion questions in the winter. So I have question one and two for week one, question three and um, four for week two, and then question uh, five and six for week six. Okay. Now you click here, and of course you're going to create a thread. So you, you want to look at what am I... So I had the question here, what company do you think has the best strategy? So this is basically the questions. So you click here. <clears throat> I'm going to create a thread. And when you create a thread, put your name and uh, a brief topic. So if I said, what company do you think have the best strategy? Uh, maybe I'll say I be, um, IBM. Capitals. Okay. And then you would type in to put in the questions and then type in your answer. Their answers after each of the questions. So we have a good idea of you know your uh, what you think and then you're answering each of the questions. Um, and then you would hit submit. Okay, so then what you'll see is this is the first student. The next student will come and create another thread, and there'll be a, a second thread here with another student's name on. So I'll go in, uh, I go in and check these posts, and every once in a while I might reply. Um, I might, I don't rate your posts. The overall ratings, of one to five stars, is something that you will do for each other. So you're going to rate each other's posts uh, about how how valuable they feel they were. So if I find a post that's really insufficient, I'll say. Um, too short uh, needs more input, something like that. So I might give you a short little um, reply on your on your discussion board post if I don't feel it's sufficient or need some extra work. And that's how we, you know, answer the discussion board questions. Okay, so let's go back to uh, discussion boards. Okay, so if you look at the instructions, so each, so I want you to make your original post on Monday, to Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and then replies on Thursday and Friday. And I want you to make your original posts earlier in the week, so that way people have a chance to read them over and make replies. So you can reply all week long, but I'm looking for you to make one original post and at least two replies. I encourage you to make more than two replies. This also helps me if your participation or your input on one of your replies is insufficient. I can look at the fact that you have additional replies and I can kind of help you get points back that you might have lost from a reply that was insufficient. Uh, and your answer should be uh, 200 to 300 words. It could be longer. And your reply should be about 100 to 200 words long. So this should be sufficient, not a few words or a sentence, but a couple sentences, a paragraph, at least on your replies to other students. And your original post should be a few paragraphs. And also, if you're going to use any information from uh, a site, a source, an article, make sure you cite that in the post as well. Okay. And that is the discussion boards. Okay. So, and that pretty much wraps up the course. So to really kind of just review quickly at the end, what you want to do on a weekly basis, you want to come in and each week I'm going to, I'm going to send you a, um, uh, each week you're going to um, get a, an email from me detailing, okay, this is what we're going to go over this week and what lectures you need to watch, what chapters you need to read, and what homework you need to complete. So in your case, you can always expect that <clears throat> each week when you start the week to go right into assignments and start working on the two cases for that week and then go into discussion and start working on the two discussion questions for that week um, and get that well underway. It's something that you want to be working at every day as well as reading the textbooks and watching the video lectures and of course um, twice a week you're going to be completing a round of the simulation. So once you complete your round of the simulation it gets put in a queue and then 
and then about I expect you to complete the simulation at 11:30 p.m. Uh, at the night of the day you're working on it, the day it's due, and then some some point overnight, maybe one or two in the morning, I'll have an automatic schedule set to run, and you'll be able to you know keep up with this once you know once you finish your round, it will be. Uh, you'll have to wait for everybody else to finish, then I run the round, all the calculations are, are calculated, your results are published, and the next day I do a video to review the results and give you some hints and ideas of how to improve your work in the simulation. So every week you're going to be working on simulation, um, case studies, and discussion boards. And that's pretty much how the class goes. And uh, I think you'll find this class very enlightening, very um, interesting, and I think you'll have a really good time. So I look forward to working with you during this class and good luck.